I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Holly, will you call the roll? President Hill. Present. Vice President Ackman is absent. Director Fulls. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. And Director Smalley. Here. Here. Yes, Director Smalley is ill this evening and is um, participating remotely. And Director Smalley, do you have anyone over the age of 18 in the room with you? No. no. Thank you. Okay. Um, Do we have any changes to the agenda? Uh, none from staff. Thank you, President. Anyone else? Any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on. Oral communications. This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communication by the public on any subject that lies within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda. Any person may address the Board of Directors at this time. Normally, presentations must not exceed three minutes in length, and individuals may only speak once. Please state your name and town city of residence for the record at the beginning of the statement. Please understand that the Brown Act limits what the board can do regarding issues not on the agenda. No action or discussion may occur on issues outside of those already listed on today's agenda. Any director may request that a matter raised during oral communication be placed on a future agenda. And I'm going to pause us just for one minute here to point out that uh, Director Ackman has arrived. Thank you. Sorry, I'm late. Um, Mr. Holloway. I'm Bruce Holloway from Calgary. Um, I want to thank your IT staff for solving the problem with the meeting and packet last meeting. Uh, it's a spurious problem that uh, continued to happen until you showed me how to um, I guess I wanted to talk about your notice, your up to team notice. I don't know if it's been talked about in public uh, before. Uh, I was a little bit uh, hung up by these words uh, stamped envelope on here. I don't know who, who typed the stamped envelope. Um, if it had come up in a committee meeting and I'd been there, I would have said skip the envelopes, skip the stamps, because you can save thousands of dollars and most people uh, aren't going to use them and some people don't need them. Um, but I guess when, when people are dealing with a bureaucracy like this, it's hard to tell who's responsible for anything. Um, I can't tell if this was uh, this was created by Miller Maxfield and they invented the words stamped envelope. I don't know where this came from, um, but you know it's a mystery to me. Um, the next thing about the notice, I've talked to a few people about it, and there's nothing on here about the multi-residential water rates. It's got single family residential, and it's got several other categories like commercial, industrial, and so on, but none of them are multi-residential. So I had a question for the district that I emailed last week. I emailed two different people, and, um, and I haven't gotten any answer. So often we come here and we ask questions, and we're told, put your question in writing. Well, I put my question in writing, and I get the same answer that I get in, in, in person which is not, um, I guess another thing I want to bring up is the $19 million. It sounds like it's a done deal. Um, but when I said at the finance committee meeting a few weeks ago that it was a done deal, I saw Director Mayhood shaking her head at me like this the whole time. I think by the time you put something in a public notice and you mail it to thousands of people, there ought to be a basis for it. So I don't know where the 19 million comes from. I don't know if that's approved already. I don't know what it's for. Uh, I think the public deserves a little bit more information about that. Another thing on here, it says, including salmon habitat improvements. So to the best of my knowledge, there are no salmon 
in the San Lorenzo River watershed anywhere. And they have not been there for 15 years. They were extirpated by 2009. I know there are salmon in Laguna Creek, which uh, Santa Cruz Water Department is responsible for. So they can truly say that they're doing things to improve salmon habitat. But I don't think they're already in the San Lorenzo watershed. And I remember discussing this with Betsy Herbert when she was the environmental uh, analyst here uh, more than 10 years ago. Uh, so I think uh, if that word had been sown on it, then I would understand, oh, you're talking about steelhead trout. They still exist, but salmon don't. So I feel kind of like I'm being treated like a child uh, when I'm being sold on this uh, because it's going to make improve things for salmon when they really don't exist. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll have to look into those questions you've had. Can I have my three minutes? You're up. Now? Yes. I am a John Patrick O'Reilly residing in San Lorenzo Valley for about 23 years. And I never really paid attention to my water billing until now for the fact that I felt it's very fair. Even with the CCU imposition uh, of $15 surcharge, I thought it was very democratic. But now with this little pamphlet handed out, and you know, playing with the numbers, I see it isn't very democratic. It isn't very equal spread of the charges coming on. First of all, for the people using the two units of water, which three years ago when we were in the drought, that was a very wise decision. Use minimal water. But now, if you're using two units of water, I see for the upcoming uh, year, it will be a 19% increase in charges for using two, two units of water. Just going up to the 10 units of water, I see a 8% increase. Because I'm using less water, I am paying more. That isn't democratic. And then with the wording of the pamphlet, oh, in the upcoming year, water charges will just be a few dollars. Bullshit, pardon, pardon for that word, but a few dollars doesn't equal out. When you start breaking down what we'll be paying for water and coming back to the water rate schedule. I am part of the 374 people on one inch water, uh, water being charged for the one inch uh, outlet main to my house. Mm -hmm. And I am getting kicked up 33% charge next year for water. Now, the killer is luckily, the receptionist that's uh, uh, San Lorenzo Water District pointed out to me, oh, what's kind of strange, I am only on a five-eighths pipe, but I'm multi-residential. I have a small studio that I'm trying to keep the rent extremely fair, and I don't want to force an increase in rent because I am erroneously charge for a one inch pipe when I have a five inch pipe going into my house. I don't use more water. Bingo, that's it. Thank you. And we'll take note of your comments. And let me see if there's anyone online that has comments. I don't see any hands up. Okay, moving on. Unfinished business, Lompico Canyon Emergency Evacuation Route Project. Right. Thank you, President. Um, so Garrett Rolf is gonna present that. Garrett? Garrett has a microphone right in front of him. 
Thank you. Um, so the district has worked with the County of Santa Cruz to reach an agreement for an easement that'll benefit the community of Lompico for a emergency uh, evacuation route if something should happen to Lompico Road. Um, we brought this before the Engineering and Environmental Committee meeting, and it was brought to our attention that the district has a ban on the use of glyphos glyphosate. And so we've added the prohibition of using that on the uh, with the easement and a remedy if it is discovered. Um, we get a small payment to the district and it's a benefit for the people of Lompico. So with that, I'd like to take any questions you have. So, Bob, Director Fultz. Uh, a couple comments, and um, I, I think this is really great that you, that you went back and worked on it. I, I brought up the glyphosate issue. And the reason I did is that the county has been attempting to use glyphosate down in the easement that they have in, in Felton uh, that they got from the water district. And I wanted to make sure that at least going forward, they understood that as a district policy, we, we don't want that. Um, I'm also very glad to see the indemnification. That's, that's a really important uh, piece. I was curious, how did we come up with $2,100? Did we get an, uh, an appraisal done or something, or did we just sort of decide? There was not an appraisal done. Okay. So we just decided. Just, well, I mean, I understand you have to have consideration, but I was just curious, you know, what, why that number versus any other. Anyway, I think this is great. And um, I, I don't know if people, I, I heard that actually half of the road in Delampico was, um, blocked, I think, this morning. So mm -hmm. this this can't be any more timely um, for us to get this done. Director Eckman, any comments? Um, no, I think it's a reason, very reasonable cost and, you know, an important thing to do. We have similar kinds of, um, you know, emergency access issues in the neighborhood that I live in in Ben Lomond up on the mountain. And so I, I think this is great. Okay. Um, I would comment that uh, for those people who are not aware of it, there is only one road in and out of Lompico, and it's a narrow two-lane road, and it's easily blocked by trees, mudslides, what have you, and so this is really essential. Bill? No, thank you. Comments? Okay, can we get a motion to approve this? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have, oh, Mark. Yes. Yeah. Um, Garrett, has the county reviewed and approved this draft? They have. Okay, great. Thank you. That's all my questions. And do we have any comments from the public? Uh, seeing none online. Gentlemen? Yeah. I heard Director Atkins say that it was a reasonable cost but the cost is to the county, is that correct? Yes. Thanks. Yes, the county is paying us for the easement rights. So it really doesn't cost us anything, except whatever time it took to draft up the papers. Okay, so we've had all the board members that have spoken. I have no pub public uh, comments from online and Oh, I, did have, I did have one more question. If I may. Yes, Bob. In the motion here, the recommended motion says authorize the interim general manager <coughs> excuse me, to execute non-substantive modifications to the agreement as necessary. Is that um, is that sort of future-proofing that is going forward, or does it mean with this agreement right now? Sorry, I should have asked that earlier. The intent is for, I'll, I'll take that one. I put that language in there. That's... Um, I, it's typical um, if there was a minor change, for instance, uh, anything could happen. Somebody's title changes as a signatory or we want to extend the agreement or anything like that without it coming back to the board. So future-proofing, basically. But, yeah, I mean, non-substantive. So, you know, that would be... I understand. I, 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 I get it. I just wanted to make sure... I was answering now. the question, though. Um, Non-substantive would be something that's discussed with um, legal advice. So legal says, yeah, that's non-substantive. I could sign for it. 
Otherwise, we bring it down. Yeah, I, I got that. Great, thank you. Okay. Okay, do we have a motion here? Okay. I will read the motion. I move that the board directs the interim general manager to execute the Lompico Emergency Access Easement Agreement with the County of Santa Cruz. Two, authorizes the interim general manager to execute non substantive modifications to the agreement as necessary. No second. second. We have a second from Gail. Holly, will you take the vote? President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Foles? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. New business. We have no new business on the agenda. And uh, that takes us to the consent agenda, which contains items which are considered to be routine in nature and will be deemed adopted by unanimous consent if no director states an objection. Any item on the consent agenda will be moved to the regular agenda upon request from an individual director. Are there any requests to move items? Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. yes. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, better understand uh, this particular uh, change order number nine. Um, and I will direct the question to interim general manager and he can assign to you. Um, do I understand correctly that there is pipe on top of the ground as part of this construction project on Altavia? Because I know that there was pipe on Altavia before the fire that was burned. Is there a remaining pipe on top of the ground now? So, Garrett, you want to take that? Oh, yeah, yeah my pleasure. So um, there's not pipe above ground with the new installation. The cross country portion of the main line is below grade, but it's not um, in the road. It's across a undeveloped track. And we have an easement for that. Correct. Perfect. Great. Just wanted to make sure that it wasn't above ground for <laughs> That's obvious, right. obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And 18, at least 18 inches of cover, right? So, yeah, yeah, it's three feet of cover. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I will move that the board authorize the interim general manager to approve contract change orders six and nine for payment to Anderson Pacific Engineering Construction Inc. for the Altavia pipeline replacement in the sum of $34,915, increasing the not to exceed contract amount from $2,535,064 to $2,569,995. Do you think I'll second that. Yeah, we can go back. Oh, okay. So I'll second it. Any discussion? Further discussion? No. Public. Holly? Public. President Hill? <laughs> Point, of order. Sorry. Point of order. We, we do need to officially ask the public. I'm, I'm sorry, what? We do need to officially ask the public. Yes. Do we have any comments from the public? Seeing none, now we can proceed to a vote. President Hill? Yes. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, back to the agenda here. Next item on the agenda is district reports. General manager, special report. Thank you, President. Um, so I just wanted to uh, give an update on the outreach efforts. Um, we had a public outreach efforts for the rate study. So we had a community meeting um, January 20th at Highlands Park from 10 to noon on Saturday. Um, I thought that we did our best to keep it as an informal, um, structured it informally so that there wouldn't be a central meeting, but rather it would be constructed more like a workshop so that people could 
ask their questions to staff um, one on one or however or in groups. Um, and so we had maybe 12 different poster boards set around the room and different staff members were strategically stationed. So to be able to take comments and questions about maybe those topics on the poster boards or whatever people brought in. We also had a table to where someone had a laptop set up who could actually calculate the rates or someone who was you know, a potential customer that had a rate if their rate bill go up, they could calculate exactly based on their last 12 months of usage. So overall, I thought uh, we had a really good turnout, particularly because it was a rainy day. We had maybe 115 people there, we think. It um, uh, looks like there was a lot of engagement based on activity in the room. Um, and also, I think, um, there were, there were clearly people that had concerns and raised those with different staff members, including myself. And I think overall that that went well, the discussions. Um, I don't think we assuaged all concerns, but at least we felt we could address them and answer questions. Um, and I also wanted to just big shout out to all the staff um, that helped, Holly, thank you, Jamie, excuse me, <laughs> Carly. Garrett, uh, James, and also Heather, our contract uh, finance manager, drove all the way down from, I don't know, past Sacramento. So yeah. she came in to do it. So um, good deal all around. So, and I, uh, since Carly's been leading the whole outreach effort, if she wants to add anything. Yeah, I think, Brian, you've covered a good amount of it. I, we did have about 115 people show up to the event, which I think is pretty successful, especially with the weather conditions. Um, outside of that, uh, we did have three comment cards submitted to us. Um, otherwise, I would say it was pretty successful. Okay. Okay. Written communications. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Yes, did have a comment. Um, yeah, I think I, I would characterize it as sort of um, uh, maybe two camps of people. There were people that were expecting a real meeting where there could be questions in public, answers in public, back and forth, et cetera. And uh, as I was going in, actually, somebody was, was very upset heading out. Uh, again, small sample, obviously, but um, I think the... The, the messaging around this, um, I think, confused some people as to what kind of meeting it was going to be. I, I think people may not have understood it was going to be more of a workshop and not a real meeting where everybody could um, be, be heard in public. Now, I understand that it was deliberately set up as uh, the workshop kind of thing, but I, I did go back and look at the, the messaging around it. And I... I could see on a couple of the messages that people might have gotten confused that way. I think it's something for us to uh, consider um, for the future. I do think it was very positive to have that kind of meeting, which we have not done in the past around rate increases. Um, I would actually advocate for more of them. Um, but I do think we need to be very consistent in how we communicate um, the kind of meeting that people are, uh, could expect to have. Holly? May I just add that I had the opposite um, uh, said to me, that they really appreciated being able to ask questions one-on-one -on -one about their specifics that they had questions about rather than being in a big room and having to listen to everyone else. It was, um, you know, they, they liked the informality of the meeting. So I did hear both sides, but I heard more of that. Both are valid. Yeah, Jamie? Thanks. Um, I, so first of all, I just wanted to thank staff for putting this together, because I know there was a lot of like, oh, you know, is this the right method? Is this the right, you know, path to take? So I really appreciate the time and energy that it took to put it together. And I think that 115 people is a really great turnout. So congratulations for that effort. Um, you know, I, I think it's understandable that there there's always people who are in different camps. Some people, you know, like engaging like this and listening to all of the conversation and some people don't. They're just like, I don't get it. I want to ask some questions. So, um, you know, you've got to have both. And I'm just wondering, 
I did see online um, the reporter for the press banner, Christina Weiss, was confused about um, whether this was the public hearing on the 20th or whether it was a outreach meeting. She did acknowledge you know, that, that she didn't read the flyer very carefully. And so she assumed that it was the actual public hearing and it did say on the flyer that this was a public meeting, but anyhow. Um, so uh, I, I wonder when people had that confusion expressed to staff during the um, uh, January 20th meeting, did, did you clarify that they could still come on February 15th to the public hearing and, you know, have their view heard and participate in that conversation as well? Yes, that was definitely made clear that this is the informal meeting and there is a formal public hearing and this is a community meeting and the intention is to be able to educate and mix and match and mingle and get questions answered. Great. Yes. Thank you. That's awesome. So with one more board, two, two more board people, then we'll get to you. No, I don't any comments? Mark, do you have any comments? No comments. Mr. Holly. Um, I did not attend the meeting, but if I had attended it and I asked what are the multi-residential rates, would, would I have gotten any more of an answer than I did when I asked 10 minutes ago? The, the notice does not refer to multi-residential at all. It refers to single family residential and it refers to commercial and industrial and so on. Um, is there an answer? What are the multi-residential rates? Can I answer him? Go ahead and answer him. Right, you have an answer on that. It's just the commercial rates. And it's there as a footnote. No. I don't see the footnote. It, it's in the other doc. If it's not there, it's in other documents that have been uh, presented to the board. But I, I am answering. We, we didn't address the questions to me, but I'm just answering you now that that the, the commercial includes the multi-family residential. Okay, I do not see any hands up from the public. There is one now. Pardon? There is a hand up now. There is, I don't see it where. Yeah, oh, there we is, yes. Uh, Cynthia? Yes, uh, I did attend the meeting and I was very impressed by the staff's efforts and I saw Dr. Uh, Director Fultz there as well. And so I appreciate the time everyone uh, took to attend the meeting. And I felt that the people I listened to were very engaged. Um, they, they engaged with staff, but also with other ratepayers, trying to understand the possibilities um, and how the new structure would affect them. What my question is, is um, will those concerns be addressed in any way um, or is the public hearing just to approve or not approve the rate increase? Or is there a chance to have any effect on the rate structure. And other than the rate structure, uh, the concerns I had were, that I heard were with how to use the Lyra program and how the penalties and discount affect people at the lowest tier. Also, I was impressed that uh, some directors from other or employees of other water districts attended that meeting because they are going to face rate increase um, processes themselves and they wanted to learn from what SLV water district is doing. And I think that's very healthy that we learn from other districts. Thank you. Okay. So I would like to make one comment, and that is that uh, we seem to uh, have a need to uh, 
upscale our game when it comes to uh, accuracy on some of the communications. And part of this was we didn't see those fires until the last minute ourselves. So we really need to make sure that we're all, you know, that, that multiple people have read through them and uh, have had a chance to, to uh, edit them. Make sure everything is clear. And it's clear that some people have not read them and did not feel it was clear. Um, so I think that's something thinking ahead the next time we have this sort of activity, we need to uh, build in a little more review time for things like that so that we can uh, avoid uh, any miscommunications. So I'll, I'll just second that. I think. I think that um, some of the questions that we've had, if uh, those of us that had been on the mm -hmm. budget and finance committee had seen that before it was sent out, which I did not see it before it was sent out, um, we might have been able to um, forestall some of the questions and some of the questions that I had actually at uh, the meeting. I, I just would add that Bob, Bob was there the whole time and Jeff went for the first hour and then I went for the second hour so that we didn't have more than two board members in the room or any potentials for um, uh, Brown Act issues. Um, so I, I I realize that, you know, we're, we're operating under a, um, a staff crunch. It was a hard, it was a hard time, but, um, and I guess what I would, would say is I know I, I put a fair amount of effort into doing a close edit of the uh, final report for the rate study for that exact reason for the executive um, summary, um, trying to rewrite some of it that was a little bit cryptic even to me. And I've been involved in the process the whole time in hopes that we can make this um, fully intelligible to your, you know, sort of educated layman types. Mm -hmm. Director Fultz. Well, it would have been good to have the final report available at the start of the 45-day um, period. I find that we, the fact that that wasn't available to be an egregious breach of uh, community uh, trust, um, uh, there, there's no excuse for that. In, in addition, um, it, it's not like the uh, rate increase was a surprise. There was ample time to plan out at least the framework, if not the specifics, around how the communication was to be done. But for some reason, we decided to wait until the last minute, which is what we do typically. So yes, I agree that it's a good thing to consider going forward, but we did the same thing in 2017. Uh, not this board, but yeah, the previous board. Yeah, and, and so it's like, well, okay, it's just standard operating procedure. Let's wait till the last minute. And, and so we don't catch things like that. Um, so uh, if I was a community, I would not be happy with the fact that the final rate report, not, there's a lot of things not to be happy about uh, in that, which we'll get to in, on the 15th, but the fact that that final rate report is now at December 20, whatever it was, is, is just absolutely not acceptable. Um, I, I do feel obliged to point out that we had a lot of changes um, happening in the staff at that time, that there was a changeover in the general manager and that Kendra resigned and she was the lead person um, on the rate study. Um, and so that's why I added my comment that I appreciated that it was a difficult time. Um, and so Bob, I think you're um, being a little bit overly dramatic given that we all know that that whole interval of November, December, um, and that, frankly, I think that, you know, Carly and um, Brian were putting in yeoman work, trying to catch up and, and make up for the fact that um, we were kind of behind the eight ball on this. I, could, I cannot imagine a worse time to be doing this when yeah. you have the general manager retiring and the, the finance director leaving, so, Bob. This is not about staff. This is about the board. I advocated very strongly that the board delay that process specifically for that reason, that we not send out the um, notices in the middle of the holiday season and to do it in a uh, got to get it done quickly fashion. This board decided 
that it was going to go ahead and proceed come hell or high water. We didn't have to do that. We could have very easily delayed it until that report was complete. We, we, the board, chose that. That's on us, not on staff. Staff did what they were asked to do by the board. I think it was very unfair for the board to ask them to do that in that fashion, in that time frame. And it didn't serve our community uh, either by, by not having that report available. Okay. Moving on. Written communications, we have a letter to the board from Ms. Wenzel. And I don't know that we have any action to take on that at the moment, other than to acknowledge we have received it and refer it to staff for the response if they have not already. And I believe at that point, we have completed everything on the agenda. Mr. Holloway. I just have a second. The uh, what? There's, there's not an item to no, comment on right now. This isn't, this a, this isn't a two way conversation, sir. I think I have a right to comment on anything on the agenda. There's, it's but we've, a, we're done with the agenda. Exactly we're exactly adjourning the meeting now. You've had your opportunity to comment on things that have already happened. Things I, I happened. My President Hill talking about the written communication from Mr. Wetzel. And I forgot what my comment was going to be because I've been interrupted now. Um, the letter was addressed to the board. So I don't think it's appropriate for the president of the board to say, let's have staff decide to respond, whether or not to respond. If someone addresses a letter to the board, they deserve a response from the board or, or not. But I don't think, uh, I don't think passing that off really holds water for me. So, okay. The board will respond, but it is standard practice to ask the staff to um, provide details and to provide information that needs to be added to make the response. Thank you. We are done. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? We are adjourned. Okay, so I have seven seven oh eight is our adjourned time. Thank you.